Peace and blessings, everybody. My name is Capri Scott, a.k.a. Sunman Patu. And something came to my attention the other day was that was very disturbing. And it really kind of, it touched me, you know what I'm saying? It touched my feelings. And I promised myself that I was going to make a video about that topic because I'm the type of dude who doesn't like to see any soldier get left behind. I don't like to see people suffering and struggling unnecessarily, especially when it's not well-deserved. So I'd like to talk about a town in New York City called Far Rockaway. When you say Far Rockaway, you're talking about basically a sandbar that I'll say is about 12 miles long. I know I'm just taking a guess from one end, from let's say Naponset or all the way down over there. What's, what's the name of that area over there? By the baseball field. Um, Breezy Point. Re Breezy Point, Reese Park, right? So from Breezy Point area, which is pretty much across from Brooklyn and Ebbets Field area. If you want to go past, you can go past. You, go. you, go. Yeah, you can go past. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, I have a mystery person that y'all can't see. It's none of your business. Anyway, right? Fire! Anyway, right? Yeah. Um... So from Breezy Point all the way to the area called Far Rockaway is an outlying island. And it's very important to understand the topography, the geography of Far Rockaway. First of all, Far Rockaway is only about seven feet above sea level. So that means when you get a 14-foot wave, you literally have seven feet of water to deal with in your crib, you know, in your house. But that's for the people that are close to the shore. So it's, very, it's a very low-lying area, but it's very important to understand the past history of Far Rockaway. From what I was told, the entire Far Rockaway, from now remember, when I say Far Rockaway, I'm not just talking down by Mott Avenue, the streets in the 19s and the 20s. I'm not just, I'm talking about the whole sandbar Far Rockaway, because there's a million neighborhoods. There's Edgemere, there's Hamels, there's Auburn. Come to find out, a lot of the projects, like Edgemere, Hamels, they're actually named after the neighborhood they're in. The neighborhoods are not named after the projects. The projects are named after the neighborhood. But if you go back a few hundred years before the Europeans arrived, the Native Americans who used to live in Rockville Center apparently buried their dead out in Far Rockaway. So don't understand first, Far Rockaway is sacred land. It's holy land because dead are buried there. As such, everybody who lives in Far Rockaway is living in a graveyard. I know of one particular building called Carlton Manor, and that was built directly on top of a graveyard. So that's a building that belongs to Hamill's Projects, and it's called Carlton Manor. And somebody had put me on. They told me, yeah, this building, that building was built in 1965 or 66. So, you know, let's go back 100 years before that. It was a straight graveyard, you know. But one thing that I noticed that Europeans do when they take over a land is anything that was holy or sanctified, they treat it like it was garbage. So what would have been a sanctified holy area, they'll build buildings on that. They'll just discard with the bodies and build buildings on top of that land. And another thing, you see, when you understand ancient sciences, sciences like Jyotisha, Shastra, or there's another one called, give me a second, Vastu Shastra. Now, Vastu Shastra is the science of how space is arranged. Um, you might have heard of Feng Shui or Feng Shui. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But basically, how you set up your house north, east, west, and south, like your kitchen is supposed to be at a certain area of your house, the treasury, the temple. They're, they're at different areas of your house to allow the energy to be maximized, to flow properly, okay? So with that said, when you're going to buy land, you want to do some form of spiritual work or divination to ascertain what that land was previously used for. You don't want to, like for example, you don't want to build a baby nursery or even a church on top of somewhere where people were slaughtered or, or murdered or raped or whatever, whatever the case may be. You know, just certain energies don't mix well with each other. But when a European brothers build, they just build things based upon the left brain. They're left brain thinkers. 
They don't use the right brain, the creative, intellectual side. They don't use the, the inner side of their brains. They use the logical side of their brains. Everything to them is just logic, okay? Good. As such, the subtle influence of a place like Far Rockaway will affect the residents. So when my son was in junior high school, he was in a good junior high school, and his teacher told him that Far Rockaway is a place where they send all of the sick people. If you are mentally or physically ill, or if you have AIDS or some kind of other disease, communicable, communicable diseases, or if you're coming out the shelter, or if you're coming out of jail after a long stretch, or if you're coming out of foster care, they usually send you to a place like Far Rockaway. Now, if you know anything about geography, you can't go no further than Far Rockaway. After that, you're in the water. You might as well swim to Africa or Europe. There's no more land. It is when God ain't got no more space for you on the earth, he sends you to Far Rockaway. But there's a hidden blessing in being in a place like Far Rockaway. You see, Far Rockaway now, because it's on the seashore and it has water on both sides, yeah, there's a lot of spirits in the area, not even to do with the graveyards. It's just that spirits gather by this, the seashore and the riverside. Anywhere where water meets land, spirits gather there. But the main th reason why Far Rockaway is actually a healthy environment is because it releases a lot of negative ions, just naturally. Okay? Because, of course, the interaction between the elements of earth and water and air, sun, and even sound. All of these elements interact right there far rock away and produce a beneficial effect if you care to tap into it. Good. Going back to what the teacher said. Far rock away is an environment where they send the quote unquote lowest of the low. Or should I say the orphaned people, the ones who nobody cares to, the one whose society throws away. The unwanted population is sent to far rock away. I want you to listen closely. Going back to the ancient, even before Hinduism, into the Vedic era of the world, there was a deity that was worshipped worldwide. His name is Lord Jagannath. This is how, this is a representation of Lord Jagannath. Interesting thing about Lord Jagannath is he is Dina Bandhu. Bandhu is an association. Bandhu, bonding, right? B-A-N-D-H-U, Bandhu. He's Dina Bandhu. He is the friend of the orphans, the unwanted, the lowest of the low, the most oppressed. If you are the lowest people on earth, he's actually much closer to you than he is to the high and mighty. So, first of all, I'm here to let you people of Far Rockaway know that somebody does care for you. And this person that cares for you just happens to be the Lord of the universe. Now, you might look at your current situation. You're living in HRA, living in the projects. Things are not looking so good for your future. Your school is no good. That's one thing. Set it aside. Or you might be living in a house, but because of the salt water and because the ground itself is made of sand. If you go to Long Beach, all the way back to Far Rockaway and dig deep enough, you're going to hit sand. And if you keep going further, you'll hit water. How do I know? It's because when it's high tide in Far Rockaway, if you go in the back streets in Far Rockaway towards the bay, literally the water comes out of the ground during high tide. So if you ride your bicycle through that salt water, your chain is going to get rusty. I'm just letting you know. Don't don't go in the back streets of Far Rockaway with your $500 bike. It's just it's not worth it, all right? Cuz I'm going to have to get y'all going to PayPal me some money so I can get a new bike. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with you. But I I just wanted to say that. Anyway, right? So people of Far Rockaway. The reason why I bought this video up is because a teacher recently told me she was sad. Because her students are sad. Her students feel that they don't have no hope or no opportunity in life. They feel that because they live in Far Rockaway, they don't matter. And nobody... I'm fighting back tears, by the way. Because I feel for people. Nobody cares about them. And we got a lot of youths in Far Rockaway. Let, let me tell you what's so dangerous about that. When a person feels nobody cares then they're going to act like they don't care for you. Like, I see thousands of black men, grown men and youths, their pants are hanging from their ass. They're showing you their ass because the world gave them their ass. You feel me? So these people don't have any more sense of self or self-esteem. So, you know, they'll let their butts fly free. It don't matter if you can smell their butt on the bus. They don't care about that. You know, let me tell you what I told this guy on the train the other day. He was sitting next to me, and his pants was hanging down. And he was sitting on the subway seat. 
I leaned over to him and I said, yo, man. I lied to him. I said, yo, man. A homeless person was just sitting in that seat right there. And I don't think that you want your underwears to be touching that surface because a worm could go into your butt. And the man pulled up his pants, you know. It's a shame that I have to tell a grown man to pull his pants up. Well, he might have been a teenager, but he was big enough to know that your buttocks should be covered at all times. You know what I mean? Except when you're using the toilet. And, you know, people don't even think no more. They don't have no more brain process to protect themselves to say, man, maybe my raw butt should not be on a sub subway seat. But, you know, anyway, that's what channels like this are for. Some man pot to a YouTube. I'm here to hip you to the hip talk. All right? So with that said, I'd like to send a message of hope to the children and the youths and the young men and women of Far Rockaway that all hope is not lost. Because you are considered the lowest of the low, you have a very high place with Lord Jagannath. Let me explain how that works. That which is high in the material world is generally low in the spiritual world. That which is low here on earth it's generally high in the spiritual world. Things like prayer, austerities, meditation, patience, cleanliness, humility, mercy, truth. I need silence. Please? Hello? All of these qualities are judged as low. Nobody cares about truth, mercy, austerities, and penance. They don't care about that stuff. But things of a material nature, acquisitions, lust, anger, greed, those things are held high in this material world. But again, Lord Jagannath is the friend of the friendless. Those people who ain't got no friends and who have been rejected by human society, Lord Jagannath loves you a lot. And he's going to uplift you in his due time. All you got to do is just take one step towards him. So this video is meant to encourage people to understand the environment that you live in. There's a lot of spirits in Far Rockaway. That's why it's so easy for y'all to kill each other. Remember, a lot of spirits are dissatisfied. They have lost their gross physical body. However, they still have the desires and act, they want to continue the activities of the gross physical body. And if they were a violent person or they died violently... And a lot of times they want to continue on that energy whatever for whatever reason. So they'll use you. They'll jump in your body so you'll kill your own people or you'll kill other people or you'll destroy your environment. It's little things I see. One day some kids was on the train platform across from me. And they were opening up their candies, their potato chips, popcorn, whatever. One of the kids threw the wrapper on the ground. So I yelled at them across the platform. I said, yo, do me a favor. Pick that up and throw that in the garbage because we all live out here together. I said, the problem with what you just did is that all litter goes to the lowest point. I said, so that potato chip bag that you just threw on the train platform is eventually going to make its way a few blocks south and wind up in the ocean. Then you go to the beach with your moms and dad for a picnic and, and, and you got potato chip bags washing up on shore. So again... Take care of your environment. Show love to your environment. I see people litter in their own environment, but will go to a wealthy neighborhood or a clean neighborhood, and they'll find the garbage can to throw it in there. They won't litter in a nice neighborhood, but in their own backyard, they will litter. See, you know you're very low when a dog is cleaner than you. Why do I say that? A dog will not litter where he sleeps. A dog will not doodle or pee where he sleeps. But you got people... In environments like Far Rockaway that will doodle or pee virtually where they sleep. Meaning they'll litter right where you live. You can't do that. You got to show self-love. No outsiders is going to come and show love to you if you live like a swine. If you live like a swine, they're going to treat you like swine. Bad enough, you could live like a king or an emperor and certain people on this planet will still lock you in chains and make you into a slave. So if you're living on the top of your existence and they will still treat you like a slave... How you think they're going to treat you if you treat yourself less than? So I need you people in Far Rockaway to pull your pants up. I need you to do good in school. I need you to prove not to the world, but I need you to prove to yourself that you're better than that. Do it for yourself. Do it for your children. Another thing, if you are in public housing, if you're in NYCHA, strive to get out. It's no place to be. 
I'm not saying everything about the projects is bad, but if you can, lift yourself up. Yes, by the bootstraps, because generally, this system ain't trying to help you. And you don't have to do it alone. You can do cooperative economics. You know what I'm saying? Even my son and I, we just took a walk through Central Park. And I was telling him, I was like, yo, this place used to be called Seneca Village. And said, um, a while back, I forgot what year, but a while back, it was a self-sufficient community. And Seneca is a misnomer, because they wasn't growing no apples over there. It was called Senegal Village. But anyway, when a European speaks, he changes the language. So it went from Senegal to Seneca Village. They destroyed that neighborhood. They killed off so many black Native Americans, and they built Central Parks. Anytime you go to Central Park, you're on holy ground. Bring some incense. If you're into that, bring some rum. Bring some fruit. Bring some meat. Whatever it is you offer to your ancestors in your spiritual system, how you've been taught, leave offering at Central Park because many people were slaughtered there. You go there for your recreation. You have fun. You eat. You drink. You even have sex. But nobody honors the dead. But the European was smart enough to put a Tekken, an obelisk, right there in Central Park, signifying the fact that there was once a great black civilization at this location. So, yeah, shout out to all of the people from Von Rockaway. Yo, teach your kids, y'all. Teach your kids. Teach your children how to show love and respect for themselves and each other. They don't have to pee on the elevator. They could pee in their apartment when they get in. Just do better. You know what I'm saying? Wash your hands when you come in the crib. Brush your teeth before you leave the house. You will feel better. It's the subtle effects. I've been living in Far Rockaway for a few years now. And only thing I could say I've done to improve Far Rockaway myself, talk to people every once in a while. I don't force myself on people, but in the course of a conversation or meeting someone, you drop gems on people. Each one teach one. And most importantly, I chant Hare Krishna out there because, you see, when you chant Hare Krishna out loud, those sound waves don't stop until they hit something physical. Wherever the Hare Krishna mantra meets an unblocked territory, like you chant, when you chant or when you make a sound, the sound travels 360 degrees out like a wave, like a bubble. So when I chant it, it will reach the ocean. It will affect all life forms in the ocean, on the shore, all the way deep, touching the surface of the waters, and it will go around the planet seven times. When you make a sound, it goes around the planet seven times. Not in the air bubble, but in the etheric bubble, the ether, the akasha. Akasha or ether is actually the medium for sound, not water. Akasha, ether. That's why there's so much sound in space, but your eardrums need air pressure to hear in outer space. That's why your ears don't work in outer space. Scientists tell you outer space is a vacuum. It's not a vacuum. It's composed of something called Akasha Ganga. That's why you see in your Bible, it told you that there's a firmament above Water's above and water's below. All of that is Vedic science. If you know the three Vishnus, Karna Dakasai Vishnu, the causal Vishnu, the original Vishnu, Garbo Dakasai Vishnu, who lays down in the ocean of this universe, 50% in the water, 50% out of the water, and these scientists are wondering what dark matter and dark energy is, and the Vedas tell you Vishnu is black. So what do you think the dark matter of the universe is? Duh! It's there. It's all in front of us. But we, our senses are so dull. And then you have Chairos. Chairosaka. Chairo Dakasai Vishnu. That is the Vishnu that's in your heart. So when people say God is in myself, God is me, or God is in my heart, I communicate with God, or God guides me, they're talking about Paramatma, or Chairo Dakasai Vishnu. Chairo comes from the word field, because your body is a field of energy. <laughs> Composed of five elements, and your body also has five working organs, and it has five modes of perception, five activities, etc. It's all on five punch, puncha. Like you say, poncho. What's up, punch? Give me five punch, five puncha. Okay? Earth, water, air, fire, ether. Five. Don't let nobody tell you that the fifth element is spirit. They don't know what they're talking about. Tell them to come to some man, Patu, and he'll set them straight. Spirit is not the fifth element because spirit is not a material element. After you pass these five gross elements that compose this hand that you see, that, that's right, this hand is composed of fire, water, earth, air, and ether. Then you go into the three subtle elements, which is the mind, intelligence, false, ego. When someone is suddenly discontinued from their body, 
and they don't realize they're dead, they'll still move around in your world in the form of mind, intelligence, false ego, and you'll call that a ghost. Okay, I'm just letting you know what a ghost is. Maybe in another video we could find out how to get rid of ghosts or how to help ghosts. But right now, this video is for the people of Far Rockaway. Pull yourselves up. Get into some cooperative ep economics. You're already doing good. Y'all got community gardens out there. If you want to get away from the fertilizer, the artificial fertilizer, which poisons, of course, the waterways, then I suggest that you get some cow dung. Cow manure, not horse manure, not pigeon manure, not bat guano. The best manure on earth is cow dung. It could turn a desert into a fertile field. But, you know, people from Far Rockaway, if you want my assistance or if there's anything I could do to help you or guide you through this process, of course. I'm here, all right? So, as always, I like to end my videos with sharing a mantra with you. It's called the Hare Krishna mantra, and it goes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Please, chant it like that. Don't chant it, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Why? Because when you remove that extra A from the name Rama, you throw off the syllable cycle. It's supposed to be 32 syllables. 32, where's that number come from? 32 times 2 is 64. 64 is 8 times 8. Krishna has 8 gopis. 8 times 8 is the matrix of your planet. That's why your computers are based on 265 bits. 256 bits and then it goes to 512 everything is still divisible by the number eight so remember this Hare Krishna mantra is a mathematical and spiritual transcendental sound tone do it properly and you'll get proper results you know just for starters you know what I'm saying so shout out to all my people recycle compost stop killing people if you're gonna kill somebody make sure you know why you're killing them don't kill nobody just based off of influence because something is causing you to involve in these activities now nah, do better than that i'm here to help you all right so you know, be blessed far rock away i want the best for y'all especially the youths you know what i'm saying i want the best i see a lot of potential in y'all don't let nobody tell you they don't i don't care if the world don't cares about you lord jagannath cares about you he is dina bandu the friend of the friendless hit me up